hello there this is the start of a new weekly vlog it's wednesday today i think the 5th of may i just finished my first weekly vlog on this channel a few hours ago and since then i walked over to my friend monia's place she just moved in here and i need to show you her book collection she's a bookseller and so her book collection is pretty huge she just moved in here so the boxes are obviously going to go but it's already so cozy in here just because of the books and the candles <laughs> you know what let me give you an overview of her book collection because i honestly love it so much i wish i had so much space to put books in <laughs> You now get why I'm so envious of her book collection, right? <laughs> yeah, she's currently doing her laundry. That's why I'm in her flat all by myself. <laughs> but we already ate the cake I brought over when I came here. It's already getting dark outside. But pretty soon we're going to do some reading sprints. Um, I don't know what I'm reading yet and neither does she. But I think we're going to do some try chapters and see what book catches our attention, I guess. Hello there, it's Monday. I don't think we've spoken since like Wednesday. When I visited Monia, right? That was on Wednesday. Well, something very inconvenient <laughs> happened. A medical emergency, if you want to put it like that. It wasn't an emergency in the sense that anything life threatening happened or something like that. But as I already mentioned, something very, 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 very inconvenient. Yeah, but no worries, everything's good now, I think. Um, yeah, what happened last week? Pretty much the usual. <laughs> I had the same two friends I always see take turns in visiting me, or I visited them. And I did some more reading sprints with Monia. And you know what's really great? I don't think anybody cares, but I, I care, I do care, I care a lot. Because Monia and I, she's one of my best friends, we always lived like two hours apart but like since the beginning of April we live like within a 15 minute walking distance. So that's great. So despite like obviously us meeting up more often and reading together and cooking together and stuff like that, we can also do our weekly shops together and I don't know but that feels like we live together even though we don't and everybody has a lot of privacy. So that's the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> um, wait, I also finished a book this week, which was great because I've been in kind of a reading slump. Not really in the sense that I don't feel like reading, but in the sense that I read less than I used to and less than I want to. And yeah, I finished a book in the span of like three days or something like that so that was great and that felt like the old me so yeah let me find it real quick so that we can talk about it i read in the dream house by carmen mariah Machado. i butchered that i definitely butchered that i'm so sorry in the dream house is a non-fiction book a memoir by the author depicting her same sex abusive relationship it's also written in a pretty unique way, I'd say. We have very, very short chapters. I mean, these are very short. Normally they are about like one, two, three pages long. And they all have titles like Dreamhouse S, for example, Modern Art, or Dreamhouse S, Second Chances, or Dreamhouse S, 
soap opera, dream houses, comedy of errors, and stuff like that. Because the metaphor of the dream house, which is also already stated in the title and shown on the cover, follows us through the book and we get a pretty deep insight into the life of the author, beginning when she met her soon-to-be girlfriend, then the time during the relationship, which you could definitely describe and characterize as toxic, very toxic and abusive. And like also the time afterwards, like how she got out of there and what happened to her afterwards, like psychologically and life-wise, I'd say. And like in the beginning, I had some difficulties getting into the book. I mean, as you might be able to tell, I even put some sticky notes in, but that was only from like page 170 up until the end. The first like 150 pages, I was quite unsure about my feelings toward the book because the unique format takes some time to make sense <laughs> or maybe I just needed some time for it to click but on like page 172 there's this quote where she says telling stories in just one way misses the point of the stories you can't bring yourself to say what you really think I broke the stories down because I was breaking down and I didn't know what else to do and reading that, the format obviously made sense because while writing this book, the author was still pretty affected by a toxic relationship, obviously, and yeah, unable to tell a story in a linear or chronological way. So we get a lot of glimpses into her life. And thinking about that, that makes a lot of sense because she also talks about like remembering moments and that you can never really feel a moment again which makes sense but I think there's something very tragic about that which even thinking about it makes me <laughs> kind of sad let me give you another quote that I that I highlighted she talks about the word nostalgia <laughs> And she describes it as the unsettling sensation that you are never able to fully access the past, that once you are departed from an event, some essential quality of it is lost forever. And obviously that can be very sad because like you'll never remember good moments the way you felt them the first time when you experience them the first time. I mean, it's very likely that you glorify them so that they get even better even though that has some other implications, like glorifying things can obviously be quite sad too in ret retrospect. But like when talking about a time in your life where you just felt miserable, <laughs> so fucking miserable, mm -hmm. she also says that every day during her time in that relationship felt like drinking poison. And I think that was a great simile. I don't know, putting myself in her shoes just gives me chills because I've never been in an abusive relationship but I'd say in quite a toxic one um, and like during that time you obviously don't recognize all these small details or red flags as one might say and sometimes in retrospect you do see them but a lot of them you even forget and even leaving a person that obviously had a very bad impact on you can feel like quite a loss and that's a very arbitrary feeling that I just hate. <laughs> so yeah. This book made me feel quite a lot of things. In the end I decided on a four star rating but rating non-fiction and specifically memoirs can be kind of harsh or maybe not the best indicator of how valuable the memoir is in the grand scheme of things because some things you can relate to and some things you can't relate to, obviously. But like keeping in mind the uniqueness of the book and this feeling of everything just clicking with every chapter I read from a certain point on, I really would recommend it. The first, as I said, 100, 150 pages weren't like my favorite 
but I would definitely recommend giving it a try because there are not many books on abusive relationships between same-sex couples, especially not between lesbian couples. So this book holds a lot of valuable information on a variety of topics. So if you're on the market for a new non-fiction book, this one's good. This one's good. Well, that being said, I'm about to film some YouTube videos for this channel as well as my German channel, so I hope my battery won't die on me because filming this sequence took me quite some time because I couldn't find the proper words to describe in the dream house. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna update you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye! Hello folks, it's Tuesday. I've had quite the productive day so far, if I might say so myself. It's currently 2pm, but I've been awake for quite a while. I've been awake since 7am because a friend slept over and had to leave for work. And for most people 7am might not sound that early, it's not, in the grand scheme of things it's not. But I couldn't fall asleep last night and did spend some time on the sofa to read. After finishing in the dream house I started a new book for another video I'm filming and this might be a spoiler but I mean it's a reread. I already know that I'm loving that book so content wise there aren't any spoilers. So let me show you. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Well is it? I think it is. Hmm. I just said that but do I mean? I, I think it I think I really mean it. Okay, let me show you. It's quite a controversial one, but it's Normal People by Sally Rooney. I love that book. I'm on page 50 or something. Even though I spent up until 2 a.m. reading, um, I'm only, as I said, on page 50 because I'm taking my time with it. I want to take in every single word Sally Rooney's writing because I'm Still very much in love with this book. I just love the character study of the two protagonists as well as the social commentary so much. I don't know, I even marked some pages already. I mean, my copy is already annotated, but not with sticky tabs. Only, they only used text marker before. Now the exposure is all fucked. Wait. Good. Is it back to normal? I think so. Okay, um, what else did I do? I already cleaned my entire flat and did some laundry and stuff like that. And now I'm off to go to Monia's house. She also just texted me. As per usual, we're gonna do some reading sprints and talk. Who's calling me? I don't have time at the moment. I hate calling. Like, not with friends, obviously, or with family members. Or people that I know, but if it's an anonymous number or I don't know the number, it's very likely that I'm not gonna answer. Except if my iPhone says it's from Hamburg, then I'm gonna answer because it might be for work or stuff. But if it's another city, I'm definitely not gonna answer because if it's important, they're gonna call again, right? <laughs> okay, um, I'm off now. I'm gonna go to the supermarket and buy some biscuits for Monia and I. And then we're gonna drink some coffee and read and have a cozy evening. And tonight my other friend is coming over again and we might order pizza. I know, very nutritious meals, very, very nutritious. Maybe we're gonna put broccoli on the pizza or maybe we're gonna eat something else, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pack my books now and head off. I probably deserve an award for being the worst vlogger this week, right? 
I realized right after ending my last clip yesterday that I didn't even tell you. Wait, can I put you on my toaster? Well, you want to take a look at my toaster? It's very pretty. It's new. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I definitely only chose it for the sake of the vintage aesthetic. But it's great. And you can even look at the toast and how brown it already is without turning the toaster off. It's great, right? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, got distracted there for a minute. I still have my jacket on because I've just been to the shops. My hair is a mess. I need to get a coat, but hair salons are still closed, I think. Yeah, I shouldn't be looking in the viewfinder for too long because I hate the natural state of my hair. I only like it curl, but I had no time today because I was sitting at my desk all day long. And now I have about like 15 minutes left to prepare a dish that a friend that is coming over tonight again <laughs> asked for because I asked him to tell me what he wants to eat. It's not like people tell me why I should cook them. <laughs> and I was very sneaky and bought like vegan alternatives for like cream and feta cheese. I also bought like normal feta cheese because I never tried the vegan option and I don't know if it tastes any good or not and he's a little skeptical about <laughs> vegan alternatives not like extremely but a little bit, he's a little reserved <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he won't notice the soy cream so I think that's a safe option and I also bought mushrooms and spinach and stuff like that. This is what I bought. Look at it. This is my card <laughs> in the supermarket. Okay, I'm about to make it now. I really need to put away the stuff I just bought, which is still in my backpack. <laughs> and need to get on with cooking. See you. So was Video. Wow, Okay, an update. I gave him the vegan feta cheese and the normal feta cheese on a platter and asked him, do you notice anything weird? <laughs> and he noticed the vegan one. So I put in the non-vegan one. The normal one. I don't know if I would say that, but like, yeah, the regular feta. But he didn't notice the soy cream. So that was a success. And I think we both agreed that the dish was pretty nice. Okay, I'm super tired now. So I'm gonna head to bed now. I'm already wearing my sleeping clothes. Oh, I look like a ghost. Jasper, who? Okay, well, I don't know. Good night. <laughs> and goodbye. Thank you for watching. See you in next week's vlog.